Here are 10 things you want to know about baby echidnas. Number 10. Get me out of here. Echidnas are monotremes, which are egg-laying mammals. Yep, in case you didn't know, there are mammals that lay eggs. Actually, the echidnas, together with the platypus, are the only living mammals left on Earth that lay eggs. Typically, echidnas breed between July and August. The female lays a single soft-shelled leathery egg 22 days after mating and deposits it directly into her pouch. An egg weighs only 1 to 2 grams and is only around half an inch long. It's basically the size of a coin. Echidnas can grow up to 20 inches in length and weigh between 6 and 15 pounds. When hatching, the baby echidna cracks open its leathery shell with a reptile-like egg tooth. How baby echidnas know what to do, we have no clue, but we're glad they do. The young echidna, which by the way is also called a puggle, is born looking pretty weird. Each baby remains in its mom's pouch for anywhere from 45 to 55 days more. When their so-called spines start to develop, which we'll get into later, well, it's time to leave the pouch. The mom digs a nursery burrow and deposits the young puggles, returning every five days to suckle them until they're weaned at seven months. Puggles stay within their mother's den for up to a year before leaving. Hey, doesn't this sound like some people who live with their parents until 30? Okay, okay, we're just joking. Kinda. By the way, do us a favor and hit that like button. Number 9. Spiny Protrusions Once these little guys start growing, their body gets covered with spines. If you think about it, they really look like anteaters and other spiny animals such as hedgehogs and porcupines. But in this case, their spines look scary. But they do serve a purpose. However, they aren't even really spines, they're actually hair. The thing is that their long spines are made of keratin, the same protein that's in our hair and nails. Each spine can be up to two inches long and have sharp ends that help the animal protect itself from predators. There are muscles at the base of each spine that allow the echidna to control the movement of the spines independently. This comes in handy for wedging itself tightly into rock crevices for protection or getting up if it ever gets rolled onto its back. Even with their spines, echidnas can still become a tasty meal for animals such as dingoes, feral cats, foxes, and Tasmanian devils. Another big threat to echidnas are cars on the highway as hundreds of these guys are hit each year as they try to cross roads. Number 8. Where they live. The echidna is native to Australia and New Guinea. There are four living species of echidna left in two families, the short-beaked echidna and the long-beaked echidnas. Actually, even though the echidna species are called long-beaked or short-beaked, echidnas don't have beaks. Really, they just have very long noses, which they use to sniff out food and other uh, goodies. Echidnas are found in forests and woodlands hiding under vegetation, roots, or piles of debris. Individual echidnas have large, mutually overlapping territories, and they supposedly are able to tolerate each other okay. Being native to Australia, you'd think they love the heat, but in fact, quite the opposite is true. Echidnas don't tolerate extreme temperatures well. When summer rolls by, they use caves and rock crevices to hide from the harsh summer heat. Oh, and despite the fact that they prefer not to be in water, echidnas are pretty good swimmers. Apparently, whenever they want to spruce up a bit, they're known to journey in rivers and lakes in order to groom and bathe themselves. Hey, we love cooling down in the water over here too. Number 7. What's an echidna anyways? Echidnas are named after Echidna, a creature from Greek mythology who was half woman, half snake. Oh, okay then. Anyways, echidnas were perceived to have qualities of both mammals and reptiles. Echidna lived alone in a cave and she was the partner of a fearsome monster named Typhoon. She was also the mother of other monsters in Greek mythology. Anyways, echidnas are also more commonly known as spiny anteaters even though echidnas aren't at all related to the real anteaters in America. First of all, the echidnas are smarter than the anteaters, but also not all echidnas eat ants. The short-beaked echidnas diet consists largely of ants and termites, however the long-beaked species typically eats worms and insect larvae. The tongues of the long-beaked echidnas are sharp and slim so that they can capture their food more easily. Number 6. They get scared easily. Echidnas are very timid animals. When faced with danger, the echidna has three options. They can run away on its short stubby legs, dig a hole to hide, or curl up like a ball. What do you guys think their best option is? If you said dig a hole, you're right. 
Some people say it can dig a hole just as fast as a human using a shovel can. The echidna digs straight into the dirt until only a spiny rear end can be seen, making it almost impossible for a predator to grab it and pull it out. It can also protect itself by curling up into a tight, spiky ball, hiding its face and feet. The kidneys are also pretty good when it comes to tree climbing, so that's one more way to get out of a life or death situation. Their most common predators include animals such as wild cats, foxes, and snakes. Snakes pose a larger threat to the echidna because they slither into their burrows and prey on the young spineless puggles who are unable to protect themselves. If you ever happen to come across an echidna, don't grab them. It'll make them freak out and picking them up improperly may even result in injury, both for you and for them. Number five, electric noses. The echidnas are unique for one more reason. They're the only land-based mammal to have developed electroreception. That's the ability to sense the natural electrical fields emitted by all living creatures through the use of electroreceptors in their snouts. Come on, you gotta admit, that's pretty cool. Since this ability works much better in the water or in very damp areas on land, it's thought to be an evolutionary throwback and an indication that they shared an ancestor with the platypus. Remember, echidnas only go in the water for a quick bath or just to cool off. The long-beaked echidnas have around 2,000 electroreceptors in their snout, but the short-beaked echidnas have only around 400 grouped in the narrow end. As a comparison, the platypus has around 40,000 in its snout because it spends more time in the water and its electroreceptors serve a much better purpose. Number four, pearly whites. When they're babies, echidnas feed their babies milk, just like other animals. But the mothers don't have any nips. Instead, female echidnas have special glands in their pouches called milk patches that secrete milk, which the toothless baby echidna laps up. When they're fully grown, echidnas have tiny mouths and toothless jaws at the end of their slender snouts. Yep, even grown echidnas don't have any teeth. Instead, they use their long, sticky tongues to feed. An echidna's tongue can reach up to seven inches in length when it's extended. Echidnas prefer eating termites, ants, and other soft and squishy soil creatures. Apparently, they particularly love beetle larvae. Their strong claws help them break open logs to get to termites, and then they scoop a larvae up with their long tongues. Number three, lifespan. Echidnas, as long as they're not disturbed, can live a long life, up to 50 years in captivity and an estimated 45 years in the wild. The reason for their unusual long lifespan is their low body temperature and slow metabolic rate. Echidnas have the lowest body temperature of any mammal at 89 degrees Fahrenheit. Their body temperatures aren't controlled in the same way as those of other mammals and its temperature can fluctuate by a few degrees over the course of the day. Having a low body temperature means their metabolism rate slows down as well, which is thought to be one of the reasons why they live so long. Interestingly enough, they're still pretty active during the day. However, once summer gets by, they'll often become nocturnal to avoid the heat. Now, don't get me wrong, they're not fans of colder weather neither. In fact, echidnas hibernate during the cold winter months in burrows. And this is probably the most interesting fact. No matter the season of the year, they can only enter REM sleep when their bodies are around 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Number two, hey, what's up girl? A strange process marks the start of the echidna breeding season. Males line up nose to tail behind a single female forming a line of up to a dozen males. These lines can last more than a month with males dropping out and rejoining. When the female is finally ready to mate, the males dig a trench in the ground around her. The males compete for mating honors by pushing each other out of the trench. The last one remaining gets to mate with the female. Seriously, how do animals make up mating rituals? Male echidnas may also mate with hibernating females. Males sometimes wake up from hibernation early and sneak into the burrows of still hibernating females. This can result in female echidnas waking up from hibernation and finding themselves pregnant while the male has already disappeared out of sight. Yeah, we have a word for that one. Uh, however, possibly the weirdest thing about a male echidna is the male echidna has a um, four-headed, yeah, you know what. So how do you use something with four heads? During mating, two of the heads shut down while the other two grow to fit into the female's two-branched reproductive tract. Males alternate the heads they use each time. That's just confusing to us over here. Number one, smarter than a fifth grader? 
Echidnas have unusually large brains for their size. Part of this might be because of their enlarged neocortex, which makes up half of the echidna's brain. Compare this to a 30% in most other mammals and 80% in humans, and you'll realize that they're most likely way smarter than they look. It was long thought that because of their brain size, echidnas didn't enter REM sleep at all, the type of sleep associated with dreaming in humans. But like we mentioned earlier, researchers found echidnas will experience REM sleep only if they're at the right temperature at around 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Despite looking so mellow, echidnas know how to get things done. They have large territories that they go over looking for food. Some scientists believe that echidnas have probably the same level of intelligence as cats. However, that's the problem. Because of how smart they are, they're great at avoiding people such as the scientists who want to study them furthermore. As of 2018, echidnas remain one of the most mysterious, cute animals out there. Here's what's next. Wow, to hunt down indeed. Most centipedes use their venom to subdue their prey through neurotoxins that stop signaling from the brain to vital organs. All the centipede has to do is get in there for a bite and it's game over. In one rare instance, a four-year-old girl was bitten in the esophagus and didn't make it. However.